Welcome to Top Knot Education, a quick chapter review for your ears in under five minutes. Refresh your memory and the time it takes to get from one class to the other. Today we'll be talking about J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye Chapter 1. I'm starting the five minute timer now. This chapter is short on plot, but very good at introducing the main themes. All that happens is Holden admits he's been kicked out of his current school, Pincy Prep. He sits on a hillside watching a football game that he hasn't bothered to attend and thinking about a good way to say goodbye to the school. He decides the best way is to visit his old history teacher, Mr. Spencer. The chapter begins with Holden talking directly to the reader. Some have hypothesized he's actually talking to a psychologist, and that makes sense because he admits he's in a recovery center. This is the direct quote. I'll tell you about this madman stuff that happened to me around last Christmas, just before I got pretty run down and had to come out here and take it easy. Holden will be telling us a story about last Christmas that will likely end badly, since at the end he has some sort of breakdown. Holden then tells us about his brother DB, who works in Hollywood as a screenwriter. Holden loves his brother, but is not impressed that his brother sold out and now makes art for the masses. Holden preferred when his brother wrote short stories, including one called The Secret Goldfish, which was about a boy who wouldn't show anyone his goldfish because he bought it with his own money. Both the goldfish and the short story collection act as a metaphor for author J.D. Salinger's opinion about art. Holden hates what he calls phonies and insists that art is for the expression of the individual not to be commercialized and sold to the masses. It's a funny main theme for a book that has sold millions and millions of copies, but the author, J.D. Salinger, believed it. After Catcher in the Rye, he only wrote four short novellas, then retired permanently from writing. He claimed to be still composing books, but not for publication. However, after his death in 2010, none of those secret novels have been seen and may not actually exist. I'm using the little brown version of the novel. On page 2 and 3, Holden introduces us to more main themes. In paragraph 2, he revisits the ideas of phonies, saying that Pincy Prep is full of them and he hates it. Paragraph 3 is about the football game he's watching. Holden is clearly lonely and wants to be at the game, but something is keeping him away. He pretends it's a dislike of people. In paragraph 4, he mentions that there are no girls at the game. Holden loves girls. They're one of the few things he is always excited about. He tells us about the headmaster's daughter at Pincy, who is ugly, but he likes her anyway because she's a girl and sometimes pays attention to him. Here's the quote about old Selma Thurma, the headmaster's daughter. I like to be somewhere at least where you can see a few girls around once in a while, even if they're only scratching their arm or blowing their nose or even just giggling or something. Old Selma Thurma, she was the headmaster's daughter, showed up at the games quite often, but she wasn't exactly the type that drove you mad with desire. She was a pretty nice girl, though. I sat next to her once in a bus from Agerstown, and we sort of struck up a conversation. I liked her. She had a big nose, and her nails were all bitten down and bleedy looking, and she had on those damn falsies that point all over the place, but you felt sort of sorry for her. We're going to learn eventually that Holden's main hang-up is he simply doesn't want to grow up. He's a teenager, in that special place between being a kid and being an adult. He can't stay on the fence between the two forever, but, but if he has to choose, he wants to stay a kid. The only thing that has a chance of dragging him out of that attitude and moving him into adulthood is his love of girls, likely spurned on by an onslaught of teenage hormones. Back to Holden's general loneliness. He has a memory of chucking a football around with Robert Titchener and Paul Campbell. Here's the actual quote. It was just before dinner and it was getting pretty dark out, but we kept chucking the ball around anyway. It kept getting darker and darker and we could hardly see the ball anymore, but we didn't want to stop doing what we were doing. Finally, we had to. The teacher that taught biology, Mr. Zambezi, stuck his head out the window in the academic building and told us to go back to the dorm and get ready for dinner. If I get a chance to remember that kind of stuff, I can get a good buy when I need one. At least, most of the time I can. At this point, we don't really know what the plot of Catcher is. We know that Holden's getting kicked out of school, but we can't tell why we should care or what he really wants. This quote, combined with the juxtaposition of his refusing to enter the football game, offer a big clue. Holden wants to be with people, but something keeps holding, or Holden, pun, him back. Leaving the hill overlooking the game, Holden heads to see Mr. Spencer. He's surprised that the Spencers don't have a maid, but instead have to answer the door themselves. This introduces the theme of socioeconomic class, which will run through the novel. Holden is rich, and while he has problems that are real, money is not one of them. Mrs. Spencer finally opens the door, and chapter one ends. So to recap, not much happens in the plot, but major themes are introduced. Catcher will focus on socioeconomic class, loneliness and social isolation, the purity of art, and also growing up, specifically through an interest in girls. And I made it in under five minutes. If you enjoyed the help, give me a like. 
I'll be releasing chapters regularly and subscribers will be the first to be notified. It will also encourage me to keep going. Now get to class or you're going to be late.